Good evening. £2.3 million. That's the massive amount of money raised by the Gromit Unleashed auction in Bristol. The most expensive Gromit was sold for a staggering £65,000. And today, some of the lucky bidders have been taking delivery of their dogs. Richard Payne reports. From around the world to around the corner, Gromit was being rehomed today. And this time, he's here to stay. This one, it's cracking Gromit, was bought for a Bristol primary school for £18,000, to the pupil's complete surprise. This one of many grommets which will be staying in his home city. Albeit in private hands, the hope is he will still be in the public gaze. Which is exactly where he was last night, as they queued out the door for what was billed the biggest night of Bristol's year. And when £36,000 secured the very first statue, everyone knew this was going to be a memorable night for artists and audience alike, whether on site or online. From the US to Europe and the Far East, Gromit went global. I think all us artists, we were, we were biting our nails thinking that they may not go for more than 10. I think that was the reserve, but uh, the fact that they all kind of blew that figure out of the water is, is a super, super result. Within 39 lots, less than half, they'd cracked a million pounds, the pre-auction estimate. For the man who'd created surely the world's favourite dog nearly 30 years ago, it was unprecedented generosity. I had to keep pinching myself as each... I mean, I was here to try and bid for a couple as well, but it just kept shooting higher above what I was thinking of. So, so after three hours frantic bidding, there you have it, the grand total for the grand appeal. Top dog tonight, well it's this fella, Gromit Lightyear. 65,000 pounds someone paid for him, but to be honest, every dog played his part. And wherever he ends up, Gromit's sure to stay in the hearts of thousands for years to come. Richard Payne, ITV News, Bristol. A Wiltshire woman jailed for killing a teacher in a car crash has today had an appeal to cut her jail sentence dismissed. 45-year-old Paula Barnes from Baden was speeding and twice over the drink drive limit when she crashed into Diane Wright's car near Wombra three years ago. She was jailed for eight years and five months for causing death by dangerous driving and skipping bail. A Royal Marine from Bath who serves in Taunton has been honoured for his bravery and skill while fighting in Afghanistan. Lance Corporal Tom Harrison from 40 Commando was awarded the Queen's Commendation for Valuable Service. He was given the honour after he provided his company with in-depth, concise briefings well above his rank. One of the main things was, was we'd have local uh, Afghans coming in um, and you know giving us information because we were pretty friendly um, you know, not just stuff about, you know, you know, Taliban and stuff like that, but, you know, stuff that wasn't going, stuff that was going right and wrong in the, you know, villages. Work has started on a new development at Bristol Harbour side. The redevelopment of Wapping Wharf will include nearly 200 apartments as well as shopping and leisure space. And there'll be a new pedestrian pathway linking South Bristol with the harbour side. A couple from Somerset have almost two million reasons to be smiling tonight. Richard and Dion Buss won the lottery after buying a ticket while they were on holiday in Cornwall. David Woodland has been to meet them and to find out what they plan to spend all that money on. Camelot say it could be you, but this time it wasn't. It was them. The giant hand descended to pluck Richard and Dion Buss away from the mundane worries of mortgages, the credit crunch, and finding enough money to fill the petrol tank. The couple from Stagursi near Bridgewater are planning a new home to visit the Great Wall of China and to devote time to fundraising for charity. It's taken until now for them to believe what has happened. I didn't go to bed all that night yes. and it's just taken days to sink in yeah. and the days, days yeah. to sink in. And he nearly threw away the ticket. Tell me about that. Um, well, we do it for two weeks and He'd put it out for the, on the table for recycling and I s looked at it and I said, we've got another Saturday draw to go. So if it had gone in the recycling bin, we wouldn't have had, on the Friday, we wouldn't have had it for the Saturday draw. 
So luckily I did spot it. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> yes. Just now you said this is just like uh, our wedding when all the champagne yeah. is being sprayed around. If he had thrown the ticket away, would it have been divorced? <laughs> I, I would have thought so. <laughs> A couple of weeks before, she actually phoned me up to actually confirm our numbers and she thought it was 47 and 48. And I said, no, it's 46 and 48. She said, are you sure? So if, we'd, if I'd let her do it, it would have been 47 and 48 and yeah. it would have been five numbers. So we wouldn't have won anything no. and we wouldn't be stood in here in front of you now. Dion, who has multiple sclerosis, has worked for Bristol City Council for 30 years, helping to collect council tax. The win means she can leave. And as for the tax on their 1.8 million, it's all been paid up front by Camelot. David Woodland, ITV News, North Petherton. Fantastic. Well, on to sport and in tonight's rugby, Bath have suffered their second defeat of the season after losing 19-13 at Sale. They scored the first try of the match, but the hosts battled back to win the game. Well, now let's take a look at the weather for the weekend with Peter Griffin. Well, uh, good evening. We've got uh, high pressure in charge through the weekends. That means the weather's going to be a lot more stable. So we're saying goodbye to all that heavy rain from yesterday, looking at a much drier picture through the weekend. Certainly dry tonight, perhaps the odd isolated shower here and there. Still very humid air left over from all those weather fronts moving through from yesterday. So quite a bit of mist and low cloud around, particularly through Somerset during the course of the night. But certainly not a cold night, 12 to 13 Celsius, the lows there. Now those mist uh, patches and low cloud could well hang around first thing tomorrow morning but eventually they'll clear through and the sun will start to punch through the cloud where it does temperatures picking up fairly quickly that's about 14 to 15 celsius a fairly light wind coming in there from the west that continues through saturday afternoon as well so not much change in the weather but temperatures starting to pick up just a little bit so 17 to 18 celsius the highs tomorrow afternoon so feeling very pleasant in that sunshine as I say, high pressure staying with us for at least, well, the next few days and certainly through the rest of the weekend, Sunday and into the early part of next week as well. So uh, quite bright on Sunday, but more in the way of cloud building Monday through Tuesday, but staying mainly dry, perhaps just the odd shower here and there. But look at those temperatures for the time of year. Still not bad at all. 17s, 18s, you might even push a 19 on Sunday. So feeling very pleasant indeed. That's the weather. Have a great weekend. And that's the way it looks tonight. There's plenty more news from our region on the website. Stay with ITV for the film Mickey Blue Eyes. I'll be back tomorrow evening at 5.30 with all your news and sports results. Bye-bye.